Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. Right now, as I'm sure you're aware, I'm not actually standing in a white studio with a, a logo thing up there. No, and I'm not standing in a, ooh, a, very, a very cold, snowy forest. No, what I'm actually doing is standing in front of a great big piece of um, green paper. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to take a shot like this one of a person standing in front of a green paper and to turn it into a final composite using the freely downloadable video editor DaVinci Resolve. Right, here we are in DaVinci Resolve 12.5. If you're not familiar with DaVinci Resolve, it's a fantastic video editor from Blackmagic Design. You can obtain the copy absolutely for free, not a trial of free to use forever copy. If you want to know how to get a copy and the basics of using it, look at my previous DaVinci Resolve videos. Anyway, here I'm going to do some composite work to show you how to do a green screen nice and straightforwardly. So I'll select these clips I've already brought in and I'll pull them down into the media pool. And as you can see, some of these clips are some backgrounds, very familiar background there. Others of these clips are some green screen elements I've shot we can use in these tests. So I'll go through to the edit screen and I'll start out by bringing down onto the timeline this green screen element. This is a standard opening to a Explaining Computers video. And what I want to do is to add a background behind that. And I think we'll try and add in this, say, snowy forest on the end of the clip there. And we'll also add in the standard Explaining Computers background on the front, a bit like we did in the opening of this very video. So what we need to do is to go into now the color screen. In the color screen, we can see every clip in Resolve. When we click on each clip, you'll see it appears up the top here, up the top right, in what is called the node editor, the node tree. Now, DaVinci Resolve, I know, can be a bit daunting when you first see it because of the way it is based on a node-based system. But what this basically means is that in this tree here, we have over on this side, on, on the left, we have the input, which is the basic colors in our, our image. On the other side, we have the output, which is the final image after we've worked on it. And in the middle, we have nodes, one or more, which actually transform the image. Every node here has got two inputs and two outputs. The inputs are for the color channel and the alpha channel, a transparency channel we use in compositing. And the outputs are similarly for the color channel and the transparency channel. So let's go ahead and create a green screen composite. So we'll go down here and we'll select the qualifier, which has this little uh, eyedropper tool. Once we've gone into the qualifier, I think I'll also just go across to make me in a more natural position there for doing this. And um, we will go down to our selection range and I will pick up the drop down here. In fact, it's already selected so I can pick the green screen color. So I'll click on the actual screen here and Take a bit of a range of that, it's a fairly consistent green. And you'll see down here in these color controls, it selected the actual green itself and various characteristics of it. You'll see over in the node editor up here, we've already got a key that's been created. You'll see it's the wrong way around, it's kept the green and not me. So I go down to selection range, I can invert the range by clicking that icon. And now we've got me with gray behind me, which shows that will actually be transparent. To make this actually appear as a composite, I need to click anywhere in this node space and then do an add alpha output. And then I go and click on the output, the alpha output for this node and click and drag it across. You'll see a little line appears, connect it to the alpha output. And there we are. We've actually created a composite and it's working to some extent. It's not a perfect composite yet, but it does actually work. And if we go through this, you'll see there we are, me and there, me in front of the, the snowy background as well. It's actually starting to work. Now, having said that, it's clearly not a perfect mat yet. And mat work, green screen work, is something where you have to do a lot of messing around. It's an art as much as a science. So to make this work, I'm going to go up here and click on highlight. Highlight basically shows us just one node. Now, admittedly, at the moment, we've only got one node, but it shows us the output of that so we can work on it a bit more easily. I'm going to also zoom things up so I can see what's going on a bit better. I haven't got everything on screen here, but you can see a big problem is the amount of green around the edge of the screen here. So I'm going to try and get rid of that a bit by changing the softness of the selection 
by going to this value here and just moving the mouse and that will soften it out a bit. That will already, as you see, take off a little bit of that green. I'm going to increase the width of it, which again will take a little bit of the green out, hopefully. And I'm going to take, that, take my saturation down, which again will improve things. We've now got a better mat on that. We can also go over here and click not on the first icon along, but the next one along, which will show us a black and white version. And you can see there the mat, which is relatively clean. There's always a problem with my glasses, but that's, that's just something we just have to live with. Um, I might try and open this up a little bit more just to uh, get rid of some of the problems in the middle of that mat. That's, that's a little bit better, isn't it? It's always about messing around. You'll see down here we can actually blur the edge of the mat a little bit, which might make things a little bit better. You've got to be careful of that too much. And again, you can clean up values. by. There's lots of things you can play with. But I'll go back here and um, turn that thing off again. Look, go back to the full composite. And you'll see it's now looking reasonably good. If we go to uh, workspace and viewer mode and we go to a full screen viewer, we've now got a reasonably good view of me and, uh, and me in front of all the snowy background. It's not perfect. We could mess around for ages to get these green values just right. To be honest, I wouldn't try and do fantastic compositing work in Resolve. It's got some tools, but not a lot. But for a quick composite, it's a very handy package to use. Right. I thought I'd now show you what happens if you've taken green screen footage for a composite, but your green screen wasn't big enough to cover the whole area you want removed in your final shot. So here you can see me standing in front of a green screen there. I'll go back to the, the standard view. I've already set up a qualifier, and if I take the alpha output and connect it through to the alpha output for the tree, I will appear in front of our corn fill. But clearly we don't want the rest of the room. So what do we do about that? Well, we go into what's called the power window tab in Resolve, and this allows us to pick up shapes which we can use to take out bits of the screen we don't want. So if I click on the rectangle here, and you'll see a rectangle has appeared on screen, and as you can see already, it's taking out certain parts of the screen. And if I just take that rectangle and pull it down a bit, nice and flexible, uh, and again at the top, don't want to go too far, we'll see bits of the room, so it's going to be just the right place. Pull it out at the side over there as well, again, just so it keeps the edge of the green screen is taken out. You'll see there's two types of handle here. The inner handle changes the size. The outer handle actually gives you a gradient. We don't need that here. But that's fine for now. That's going to work, I think. We'll just click back on the qualifier so we can see it like that. And as you can see, that's given us a very nice composite. Now, the final thing I want to point out is just how nodes work in Resolve more broadly. We've only got one node here, so we haven't got a lot going on. We can add lots of other nodes in. So, for example, we could go to nodes here on the menu and add a, another serial node. As you can see, you can do add serial node before current or add serial node by definition after current. It will appear in there. Let's just space them out again. So you can see we've got the first node controlling the green screen. The second node isn't. So we can use that to do something else. So, for example, we could do some color work with that. We could go down into um, colors, for example, down there. We could say click on monochrome. That node now turns me monochrome. And that's a very good example of showing how that node is working after this node has been applied. This node gets on, we're doing the green screen work, then we take out the colour, but it hasn't affected the green screen. Probably don't want to do a monochrome actually, but I might do, what I often do on these things is to do a slight curve. I like to have a slightly cinematic gamma on my output, so it's something a little bit like that, and that will make a, the shot look, I think, slightly nicer. But the principle there going on, let's have a little look at it. Oh, I think that's marvellous. Yeah, the principle here is we're showing how we're taking multiple nodes, different nodes do different things. Here, one is doing the green screen, one is doing a bit of colour correction. When I was young, which is admittedly a while ago now, but when I was young, the whole idea of doing composite photography of shooting elements in front of green screen or blue screen was amazing. It was very much still in its infancy in television. The, the BBC called it CSO, Colour Separation Overlay, and the results were, were not that impressive. All other TV companies in the world called it chroma key, as we still call it in video sometimes today. And companies like Industrial Light and Magic, ILM, were really pushing the boundaries with optical printers that were capable of taking blue screen shots and turning them into amazing final special effects. And when I think back to all of that, I do find it extraordinary that today 
A package like DaVinci Resolve allows pretty much anyone access to uh, blue screen and green screen photography to produce final composites, and you can even download DaVinci Resolve for free. But now that's it for another video. If you like the video, please click on the like button. If you've not subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.